How's it going? I know, I know. Crazy hectic, right? Well, sit back and relax and welcome welcome to the Mom and Pops Fun. Help me welcome my dad and the host of the show, St. Patrick. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. I apologize, everybody. I apologize. Welcome to all my moms, pops, guardians, and guests. This is episode number 26 of the Mom and Pop Spot podcast. Um, and we got my co-host, Bernice. Hi, guys. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good. And we got a special guest returning today. Yes. Return of the Mac. Right. Yes. How are you doing? I'm all over the place, but yeah. I'm good to be here seeing yeah. these people that make me happy. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. We're we're happy to have you. So yes, yeah. I miss you guys. Yeah, without yeah. you, it'd be an empty seat. Mm. I know. Oh, uh, you need to come on here all the time with us. <laughs> I would yeah, love I that. I would yeah. love that. You guys are awesome. Yeah. My people. Yeah. Um, but how have you guys been? I know it's been a minute because I haven't been consistent. I apologize, Dip. It's just life. You know what I mean? Like how For you say it's just, it. Is. It has been nuts. I mean, we've had, um, I think I was telling you, like we've had, you know, the family and the death. We had, um, you know, birthdays. We've had, you know, work. It's just life has just been chaotic. But it's a good thing because it keeps me grounded. It keeps me humble. Yes. Yeah. What about you guys? How, how's everything going in your guys' lives? It's been pretty busy over here, too. My daughter's birthday was March, and then yeah. my other daughter's was April. And it's to have my cousin that's getting married, and I got to find out my cousin's having a baby or going to be having a baby. Yeah. Like it's been crazy. Let me ask you a quick question: Where do babies come from? I don't know. Huh? Come from. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. Yeah, I don't know. Isn't it the stork? Well, I thought so. Yeah. Maybe that would be nice. These nuts. Yeah. <laughs> What about you? What do? You, how are we from one to ten? Man, honestly, I'd probably say I'm a negative nine. Oh man. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I'm smiling. That's just me. But yeah. yeah. You know, I'm getting ready to go to San Diego tomorrow to um to put to rest a beautiful soul who shouldn't Aww. be getting put to rest. Yeah. And her name is Deji. I'm so sorry. I'm me too. So sorry. I'm yeah. pissed. I'm angry, but there's no one to really be angry at. The situation was really just unfortunate. Um, she leaves behind a ten year old daughter. Wow. Oh. That's the hardest. She was a <clears throat> a very beautiful, ambitious young person. And yeah. I just I'm very like I'm emotional. Like yeah. I cried like three times at work sorry. today. Yeah. Trying to find the balance between everything right yeah. now. Man, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's tough. A good thing though is my mom. She's getting ready to come out here on the eighteenth. And me and my mom have been estranged uh majority of my life. But I mean Without trying to go into too deep of a detail, I'm just proud of her and the woman that she's become. And for her to come out here, I'm very nervous and excited. So, Aww. so let place. me let me elaborate on that because a lot of times when I was younger, thank you. Um, and even up to you know currently, let's say three five years ago, whatever the case is, I was very hard on my parents. Yeah, I judged them. I was so angry because I'm like, man, like I have a lot of child trauma because of you guys. But yeah. then when I look at it hindsight, I'm like, man, like. I understand now where you guys were coming from. I understand, you know, sometimes you needed a break or whatever the case is. And and I, it was very easy to attack them. Yeah. Yeah. But when you look at it, you know, you're like, man, like, I don't blame you. you yeah. know what I mean, you 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 allow yourself to release that frustration yeah. and, that, and you allow yourself to forgive them and yeah. to forgive yourself. You know the what I mean? The crazy thing is I always understood my mom. I always live in duality. So, like, even though, uh, like, she did some wild things, like, she like wigged out. She left us, you know, mm -hmm. she ran off and had new kids with a new man. And yeah. those, I love my little brothers. I love them to death. Um, but I never judged her in those moments because right. I'm thinking I see her every day. She's up at five. She's hitting the she's the old school workout lady. She goes to a track yeah. and a field and works out there and then comes back, gets the kids ready, go to school. She participates at school. She works. Then we do the same show after school. So she did that every day for like 13, Super 14 mom. years. Yeah. I understand. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not doing that yeah. shit. And then when I see so when she did what she did, I was kind of like, damn, like, all right. But she disappeared for like two years. So from mm -hmm. my junior year to my senior year, actually sophomore year to my senior year, I didn't have a mom. I was in foster care. Yeah. Yeah. So and she, like I said, had other kids, my siblings, whom I love dearly. And I don't never reason. I've never resented her. I've never. My dad though, fuck that guy. But my mom, I'll protect her at all costs. Well, kudos yeah. to you for being able to do Thanks. that because there's yeah. a lot of people like I know. I that's a, an important age time <laughs> in your like where 
from sophomore to senior. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's so, very important. Oh, I was getting roasted every day. Yeah, you know? especially for a girl. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you black, white girl, you can't do this uh, with your hair. You don't know how to do this. And I'm, th- I'm thinking, I don't even know who I am. If I want to dress like exactly. a skater today or yeah. Beyonce tomorrow, you leave me alone. Shit. Yeah. But uh-huh. now that I'm an adult woman and this is, I'm in my 30s, I'm very nervous. Like, I'm like, ah, oh, I don't know what to do around. She's like, why don't you plan everything? And I'm like, I don't know you lady what are, you, what are we about to do I'm yeah. Yeah. well do do what is that what you like to do and then you know what I mean that yeah. way you'll feel more comfortable in that zone and anything challenging this week with parenthood my son them? my son told me straight up that I you know he don't really respect me right now oh wow I don't he, does, he said he's not happy with like the lifestyle and you know he told me the other day he's like I don't believe in God anymore like he's trying to hurt me because he's hurt yeah, yeah. and I know that he's hurt What's and, he hurting over, did he say? Yeah, his, well, he, you know, his dad's not in his life. And my daughter and my son have the same dad. But my their relationships with their father are both different. Yeah. And I never liked that. So he told me that he doesn't really respect me mm-hmm. and that he has no reason to try. <laughs> He's 10. Yeah. So I let him have that moment. And then I react on my own. So I had to go do my thing and react. But when I come back to him to talk to him and I'm just like, well, we do believe in a higher source we do Mm. believe in a higher power because we've been saved saved in so many ways by saving grace right and i explain it to him and i can hear in his his voice the pain he don't even understand he don't even really know why he's mad he just doesn't have he doesn't have his yeah he doesn't have his dad he sees you know yeah but he's been living so long without him he's like do i need him or or, i don't know he's confused so it's my job to Shit, I'm taking it. I'm taking all of it. I'm like that punches, that yeah. X-Man who gets hit so many times and he just absorbs it. And then eventually when he hits you back, you're getting everything you dished at him. But yeah. I will never give that back to my son. I'm going to keep it forever. Yeah. Uh, at work, it's the same thing. So I just try to balance it and just be thankful that I'm here to hear him tell me he's disappointed right. because I'm yeah. about to bury a friend who will never get to have a conversation with her kid again. Yeah. yeah. So I will take it and I will listen to all of it. And it hurts because... Yeah. I'm by myself. I don't have someone to be like, it's okay. You don't have but, that leaning support. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know my mom that well. So I can't be like, hey, mom, do I? She yeah. calls me for advice for, for the kids. So yeah. I just try to just breathe a lot. Reach yeah. out to yeah. us. I mean, we're here. You know, I, I know a lot of times it's easier said than done because of the fact yeah. that you're like, oh, like, you know, okay, like I'll reach out. But a lot yeah. of times it's. I don't want to put this on you. I don't uh, want to. I mean, I would I'm, rather do it's this. Hard. We're yeah, a community, I though. I understand yeah. what you're coming yeah. from. Yeah. We're a community and we all have to help each other because, you know what I mean? Hurt people hurt people. And yep. Yeah. And we can speak from experience because more than likely we've probably been there ourselves. Yeah. I mean, yeah. thinking about your son, like there's plenty of times where me and my dad, we went years where we weren't yeah. talking. My dad, sure. you know, went on this, you know, parting binge or whatever the case is. And yeah. there was a good period where I didn't talk to my dad. There was a good period where I didn't talk to my mom. And I was just trying to figure myself out. I went to a, you know, majority white school. Yeah. So I hard. was, I was the wannabe white kid. I was yeah. a wannabe Mexican kid. And yeah. it's like, yeah. I was trying win. to figure myself <laughs> out. Right. And it just got me into more trouble, which mm-hmm. gave more people ammunition to, there goes Patrick. He's always mad. <laughs> right. There goes Patrick, you know, the problem child. And yep. it's like, no, I'm just misunderstood because of the fact that I'm trying to figure out who I am. Yeah. You know what I mean? Isn't that crazy that how we realize that now, like looking back at yeah. what we went through, right. all the stuff that you didn't know who we were. We were just trying to figure it out. And it's in, I, yeah. not that I grew up in a horrible neighborhood, but it wasn't the best. Yeah. We lived in some apartment to apartment to apartment and it, it's something that i'll never forget you know it's just something but it's a beautiful thing too because I, mm-hmm. I think about that and i'm like when i think about my kids i'm like man like sometimes i was going house to house apartment yeah. apartment because yeah. they were literally just living we were living in a place until we got evicted mm-hmm. we were eating top ramen soups and yep, ramen. we were throwing in shrimp mushrooms to yeah, try to like yeah. change it up or whatever the case is and i'm yeah. like i'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that my kids never you know get that you know right that griminess that i had to go through yeah you know what i mean but and that's funny too because the catch 22 to that is that that might be exactly what they need yes that I was might just be gonna yeah. say. exactly what they might yeah. need to feel to understand because they don't know they know you as dad they don't yeah. my son knows me as mom they don't know what i do i have to you have to i have to show them yeah like they might eventually have to come here to see what this is about in the same way they want to see what's going on at fries they want to see what's going on and whether i'm working somewhere they want to they want to, the kids judge you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, you know, my, they'll tell you the truth. And I think for my son, um, I'm always in his shit. Like yeah. I'm always yeah. in his face. I'm, he's, oh, baby, what's wrong? You need some, you need something? That's, uh, it's me. 
Now that's a privilege I never had. Nobody yeah. was breathing down my ass. Watch, oh, you you breathed hard. Something wrong with you. So I think for me, outside of being the mom that I am, he might need a, a dose of this medicine. Like yeah. he might yeah. need to know what it feels like. That's, sure. it's, and that's good that you say that too, because like I, I mentioned it a few times on the show where I'm not afraid to tell my kids I love them. You know what I mean? I wasn't told that when I was little. You know what I mean? Now we have a different relationship with my mom, my dad, you know, even my grandparents, whatever the case is. Like we we express our love with you with, to, to each other. Good. When I wasn't, it wasn't the same situation. I always had a question. Do my parents love me? You know, yeah. do my siblings love me or whatever the case is? You know what I mean? Like that hurts. Always, yeah. And then, and then you're confused because you're not sure what it is that you're supposed to be feeling. Yeah. So you look for it in wrong ways. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's crazy. It's overwhelming, but we do it the is. best we can. Yeah. That really, and I've been going through it with my middle one. My, she just turned 17 in March. And, yeah. Oh my gosh. She's just been, the other day, she just got in trouble. Like, she just got her license. Mm -hmm. You know, her dad went out and got her a car. You know, nothing mm -hmm. fancy. Just wanted to get her to work and home, you know, because she does school from, from home. Right. And she just, she does good, and then she falls off. Mm -hmm. And she, I said, be home at 730. Uh -huh. And for some reason, she just says, she decides to just make her own decisions, and I'm going to come home when I want to come home yeah. is mm -hmm. basically what she's telling me. And I, because I'm my lupus, I get so sick when I'm stressed. Mm -hmm. She made me so stressed out that it, this was just like two days ago. Wow. It all happened. And she didn't, she decided not to come home till 1230. Like, okay. all right, you're going to yeah. tell me what you're going to do. So I called her dad and it was just, it was just a hot mess. And I just like, I can't, I don't even have the energy for it anymore. Like, I'm just, what is your problem? And every when I ask her why, it's always, I don't know. She never had oh, an never actual know. They never answer. Know. Yeah. There's no answer to why you did what you did. Like, really? You know it's why. You why? knew when you did it. Yeah. Yeah. Now you don't know. Yeah. That That's it. I deal with that too. So what do you do when, when she? Oh, my God. Like, that night I had, because I had work the next day, and I'm like, I have to go to bed. I even was texting her dad. I'm like, I can't wait up for her. Like, I yes, I'm worried about her, but... There's just a point where I just can't, mm -hmm. you know, and him too. He's like, well, because my oldest daughter, I said, she's up late anyway because she does work, school, stuff like that. So so when she comes home, take her phone, take her keys and put it in my room. But I see I'd be afraid on that mm -hmm. because would. at that age, I think about a lot of times when I'm thinking about discipline, I'm thinking about, OK, like if I do these situations, what's it going to look like? What's the next step? Yeah. And a lot of times kids are very easy to rebel. And I think about me, you know, particularly if that was me, oh, I just take off. Now you don't have any connect. Now you don't have no way to really get a hold of me. Yeah. And her phone died. Yeah. You know, and she had said, cause she had said, I'm going to go eat yeah. and then I'll be home. Like, no, you're not yeah. going to go eat. And then make her a sandwich <laughs> in that ham. You're going to, you're going to in that meat or in somewhere in that sandwich, you throw an air tag in there. So when <laughs> she swallows it, you're able to catch her forever. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. It's just a freaking nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I freaking hate well, I hope, life. I hope she doesn't do this often because I really don't want it to affect your health. I feel like with her, she's putting me through the ringer. And she's always been that kid to yeah. put me through the ringer. This is the birthday that was in March? This is a March baby. Mm -hmm. March 19th. She's going to have to understand what she's doing to you. She's has, she has to understand what she's doing and how this affects you. Though. I know. Yeah. And, it, and like it's like to the point, though, where like, like, I don't even really want to talk to you. Like, yeah. I'm so yeah. pissed at you. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm so, like, you aren't hearing anything I say. Yeah. You know? At that point, yeah. That's crazy. My 10-year-old's doing that. Yours is 17. I'm, sh I'm fucking scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the last episode, we were talking about bad parenting advice. Um, do you guys have bad parenting advice? Like, actually, let me give you some examples that we were talking about the last show. Uh, we had covered, you know, if someone hits you, you lay their ass out. You know what I mean? A kid, if your kid hits you? No, if if another kid hits your kid. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, can that be considered bad parenting? Because, like, I tell my, my kids all the time, someone puts their hands on you, you have all, you, yeah. you have my, you know, my approval to lay their ass out. Yeah. Um, or when a child starts dating, uh, this is where me and my wife, we go back and forth on it because she doesn't agree. And this is my advice. But I'm saying, like, you know, when they get into the point when they start dating, whatever the case is, thought it out. Be a little thought. You know what I mean? Run it. You don't like it? 
it's milky. <laughs> oh, but it's Jap it's Japan. She said it's a yeah. milky. It's Japan a wine. Milky wine. But anyways, I tell them, to, you know, to start date everybody. You know, get out of the system so you know who you're wanting to be. Your or kid be might with. not be that way. If, if I'm saying if they want to. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to, but they don't usually people you don't know yeah. until you like kind of hang out with the with different communities, different social groups. Yeah. So then you're like you're you're hanging out. I mean, that's dating, right? Yeah. But then when you start talking to somebody, when you start developing feelings with somebody, right. you want to be a little bit more precise and particular and picky. Right. Hang out with everybody. <laughs> yeah. Date picky. So be a thought in a sense that yeah. you're sociable, but to a certain degree, you have these certain standards. Like uh -huh. I tell my son, because he doesn't like certain things that I do. Yeah. And I'm preparing him because he's already interested. Like he's already liking the certain girls, girls in our neighborhood that he likes. Yeah. 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 So I'm entertaining the idea, but I'm trying to help him understand if there's certain things that I don't like and that you don't like about me, like right. don't like attack other people because you see that in them because he'll look at a girl who, you know, is a little bit louder and just be like, ah, it's like, she's like you mom. Cause I have to be loud. Yeah. Cause they don't get his attention. So yeah. that, that's how I feel about the dating part. Don't project or don't take what you don't like about me and put that into the world. Learn right. different personalities. Cause that loud girl might be coming from a different background. She yeah. might have a different place, a different heart than your mom. So I kind of disagree with the dating part yeah. and then the hitting part too, just because this is something that we, we don't really go into depth about you don't need my permission to defend yourself. Yeah, you right. don't right. ever think that you need my permission. Yeah. If you feel unsafe and you feel threatened, listen to your higher power, listen to the, yourself. But if you're in a split second, you don't know what to do. That means you have fear in your heart. And so we have to work through that because if you're always, if your reaction is when you feel fear to attack, right. you're going to train your brain that from a young age to an adult. And I'm not going to do that. So my son and my daughter both are not a normal sized kid. They're both very adult looking children. Yeah. If a 10 year old, normal 10 year old came up and hit my 10 year old, I would look at my 10 year old like I wish you would hit him back yeah. because you would hurt him badly. It, his punch to your punch is not going to be not the, the same. same. Yeah. So assess your situation. Now, if some grown person tried to check you because they think you're grown and you know that it's about to get physical, you have two choices. You can either keep yourself safe and walk away yeah. or you can prove that you're stronger than him and do that move that you learned last week and learn what? Because you don't get rewards in the street for fighting. Yeah. You get those on the mat. Yeah. So yeah. I tell him that there's consequences. And this, my daughter, I don't think they're like a really a violent person, but I think that's a front right now. Yeah. I think they are, you know, they can, they have it in them. We all do. But yeah. if you know, okay, my mom said, if you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. And you're just waiting for that. Then you might as well just have started the fight. Yeah. Yeah. Mine is just more of, I think you, you elaborated on it perfectly. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're in a situation where you need to defend yourself, don't necessarily worry that you're going to be in trouble with yeah. me. Yeah, because yeah. I don't want you to be in a situation that, you know. Yeah, that I got a question. Yeah, go ahead. Kind of coming back to uh, <laughs> Lunar's son, just just out of curiosity, because yeah. <clears throat> I, I do kind of agree. But just it just popped in my head. Like, what if the kid because you were saying you don't really want your son to hit somebody else in retaliation because of the size difference. Yeah, which is totally understand understandable. Like. I'm not going to walk up to Mike Tyson and hit him and, and want to yeah. get hit back. Right. And, you know, and right. I'm not a big guy by any means. Right. But um, the thing that popped in my head is like, well, you know, sometimes like you guys were kind of saying before, sometimes they need to go to that experience. Yeah. Talking about the other kid, not oh, your yeah. kid. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. maybe that kid is a bully. Yeah. Maybe that kid hits kids all the time. So maybe your your son, maybe he needs to knock him the fuck out. Right. Yeah. Just maybe, one time. Just not beat maybe. his ass. Right. But give him a good one. And yeah. that knock might him be on his ass. that might be he <laughs> might need that feeling that that experience might be something he needs to experience. And being that, that that would be my first time as a mom being put through. I've dealt with this with other people's kids. And I'm always like, I'm the protector. Like, stop. Like, if anything, let's go to the mat. Yeah. You're going to do it right. Because once you do it on the mat, those three minutes are not, you're not going to look for those. You're not going to look for fighting situations. But for my son, I, I always tell him, just pay attention. Yeah. Like he has to be able to assess it. Because if I'm assessing your situation every time, then you're just going to be looking, you're going to be a me and not a you. Yeah. And I want yeah. him to be a him. And the same thing with my daughter too. Like, you know, they pay their people watches. So they watch everything. If the moment you, like, if I were to stand up right now and we were in an argument, my daughter's going to stand up too, because she's going to be prepared. Yeah. My son, he's a little goofy. He's 10. He's going to be like, I don't know. So if someone comes up to you and pokes on you and starts a, starts a fight with you and you're not prepared, that's what I'm irritated with him about. I need him to pay attention. But if yeah. someone comes up to you and off the rip just knocks you or get up, like, I want you to assess it. Is there four of them and two of you or one of you and six of them? Or right. just because you know how to fight or you feel like you can't take them, do you have to? 
what do you get out of it? I just yeah. want them to pay attention. And this is coming from yeah. someone who's a fighter, like in and off, off the court, in and off the field, I've been to jail. I have a record for fighting. It's not something I promote. It's not something I want people to do. Yeah. Right. But it's something that sometimes you have to do. And in those situations, you have to do it. You got to do it. And I would never brag about it, but I'm glad I, I did what I did or else I don't think I'd be here. Oh, wow. Yeah. So yeah. that's crazy. Sometimes you, some kids, it's different. Like some kids, you got to, they get tried too much. So you might yeah. need to step, they might need to step, step up, but it's hard. It's hard because you don't know their background. You don't know their life. But I just, I'm, I think my bad parenting <laughs> advice is that I just, I feel like we all should heal together and we're not yeah. doing that. I wish, I agree 100% with you. Yeah. Um, a lot of times when we're, you know, in competitions or just whatever it is versus mm -hmm. I read a story actually, just, it's funny that you say that. Cause I read a story, you know, just the other day where it was just like this race. Um, there was like a 5k race, different countries. And there was this one guy, he, you know, literally right at the brink of passing the finish line. There was another guy behind him and the other guy knew that the other guy was like, mm -hmm. you know, wasn't going to make it. So the guy ends up pushing the guy in front of him yeah. to get him past the finish line. I think I saw that. And they were like, I don't get it. Why did you do that? And he's like, it goes against my morals. He's like, mm -hmm. we need to be able to win together. Yes. As soon as we learn how to win together, he's like, that wasn't my race. He's like, yes. that was his race. Yes. He's like, and by him winning, I'm winning too. Period. He's like, because if my kids look at this, if my fans look at this, he's like, what are they going to think? Teaching them? What are yeah. we teaching each other? Yeah. Some people don't understand. People train their whole lives to run those like four second races. You right. Me? They train their whole life every day, what they eat, what they put in their body, how they act. And then they're mental. Yeah. That's deep. That's real deep because it's like, I've been training my whole life. I want this badly. I want to win. But then I see you, I see you. I want to win with you. Yeah. That's a real yeah. winner. Yeah. That's a real winner. I respect that. And I love that. I don't yeah. like, I don't like how society tries to play it like competition. But then again, we do live in a corporation. I mean, America. So yeah. that's just yeah. how it is. Yeah. I heard this term momster. Have you guys heard it? No. Yeah. I've never heard of it. I'm a gangster yeah. mom. Yeah. Momster. Well, huh? Yes. So momster, it's pretty much what happens to a mom after she counts to three. Oh, <laughs> I'm definitely a momster. <laughs> Have you guys ever had a momster moment? Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever do it just to scare your kids for fun? Just because you, you know you're not going to do shit, but you just do yeah, it. Yeah, I just want to see if they're they're going to react <laughs> yeah. to where, yeah. how it used to be when mm -hmm. they were little. Yeah. yeah. Now it's like I don't know if I'm going to do that anymore. <laughs> I'm tired. Yeah. I'm going go to my room. They're going to forget. <laughs> Some examples are like wanting to fight your kids, uh, making your kid eat everything on their plate, making the kids wear the same shirt at the same time when they're arguing. Uh, but I feel like those examples are kind of soft. Like I know when my mom, like when she was, you know, had her mom's for a moment, she would go hard in the paint. Yeah. She would literally yeah. like. I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> we would literally do like matrix motions with throwing her shoe at us or whatever she had in her hand oh, or. Love, yeah. Um, they made me um, sweep the culture sack with a broom. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, it's still going to continuously yeah. be dirty and stuff like that. So. That's messed up. Yeah. Um, I actually remember your mom told me the. uh the half-ass haircut story. Oh, bro. I wanted a haircut and I didn't do my chores, so she she was like, "Oh yeah, like I'll cut." Cause she she wasn't bad, but she wasn't good at it. But she, I mean, I was desperate for a haircut. I was going to school. <laughs> she gave me the most fucked up haircut. I went and I went to school the next day with the hat on, and they're like, did? "Yeah," and they were like, "You oh, can't God. have a hat in the class," and I had to take it off, and we got made fun of. And damn, my mom don't play. Your mom does not that. play. <laughs> damn. Yeah. My parents did that public humiliation and I lost a lot of respect for them. They yeah. made me and my brother wear the same outfit every day for whatever reason. I don't know, but it, I love my, I like, I to this day appreciate my parents and yeah. how, I, how I am and what I look like. And so why you don't fault me for that? You yeah. know, just because I'm, I'm a, a, a secure young little girl. I don't, yeah. No one's giving me securities. I'm giving them to myself. They should have been proud of that. Yeah. They didn't like that. They thought me and my brother were like, trying to be something I don't know what the fuck the point of that was but they made my brother wear the same fucking Laker sweatsuit outfit and I wore the same Tommy figure Tommy Hill figure I haven't worn Tommy Hill figure until I moved out here it's been, it was like 20 years because wow. it was the same jeans and the same top and they made me wear it like every day and like people really was like coming for me and my brother like oh you're all bummy like what? I mean, yeah. at least she was laced up in Tommy, though. Tommy yeah. back in the day was... Like, I was like, yeah. you had money yeah. if you were yeah. right, Tommy. <laughs> yeah, but the same shirt and the same pants, like, every, every day. day like, yeah, dang. kids are... They spent, our, they spent the annual income on this Tommy outfit. <laughs> 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 I'm going to wear it every day to get my worth. <laughs> yeah. So before we continue, we're going to take a quick potty break. Uh, but before we do, don't forget, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe like. to this channel, and share this video for support. Ooh. We'll be right back. Don't forget. <laughs>
and you're back. And we're back. Um, I have a random thought. No matter how you believe, but um, in your next lifetime, do you want your life to repeat itself? Or what do you want to change? Hell no, I don't want my life to repeat itself. So what are you changing then? I'm changing everything. Yeah? Being- no, I don't know. I definitely wouldn't want to repeat my... I feel like I went through a lot, you know, growing up and... I felt like that had a lot to do with the decisions that I made mm-hmm. growing up. And yeah. I just wouldn't want to repeat that. Yeah. You know? I get it. I don't know. I'm crazy. I think I'm deranged, but I would say, yeah. Yeah. You yeah, do what? it all over again? Yeah. If I had, I mean, whether I have consciousness of the knowing or not knowing, because in a weird, sick, twisted way, I feel like I've been repeating this shit for like many, 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 many moons. Like, I feel like a star seed and I just keep coming back to get the same life until I get the message that I need. Because yeah. I have some weird deja vu where I. Oh, like, I do the same thing. Yeah. And I'd be like, but me and my mom haven't had this situation yet and she's coming out here, but I yeah. had like a weird. I had a weird memory where it already happened or it might have happened on a different yeah. dimension. I don't know, but. It makes me un, like not easy. Un- yeah, because I don't know. Like, am I, am I psychic? Do I have powers? I don't know. But that's crazy. But what I do know is that, like, I would just. I feel like each time, if under the, under the circumstance that let's just say I am already living the same life over and over, yeah. I feel like I'm learning something different. To I have to, to agree because a lot of times I'll get those moments and I'm like, man, like what the heck? Like, there's no way that this could have happened before. Right. Yeah. And I just get stuck in this trance where I'm just trying to figure out, okay, like I know this, you know, it's just yeah. sometimes I'll have deja vu of me having deja vu of that exact moment. Exactly. And it's weird, you know, I just can't figure it out. And anything that I read up on that or anything that I try to research and reference to that just basically says, oh, you're a star seed and you're coming back to get. <laughs> I, don't yeah. mean, what? I don't know what that means. But I do feel like I don't want to have any ties. Like I, my family is my family. Yeah. yeah. My race, my culture, my identity, who I am. Um, my kids, all, I'm not not changing none of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. The only thing that I would have liked, or in my life's not over. At least I don't think it's over anytime soon. Knock on wood. But yeah. I want a partner. Oh, yeah. and I, I want to have that. I don't know what it's like to live life with your partner, like your own partner, not not the one that you share, but like yeah, someone that wants you just as much as you want them. Right. And I, I think that's the only thing that I would add into my life. But maybe maybe there's a reason why I don't have that. I do feel content. Like I feel good. I but love why, myself. Why is that? Why do you? What do you feel like you're missing, or that you're? What is the disconnect? I don't know. I want a partner, but I don't want. I'm not ready to do and do all the things because I'm not secure in what I got to do for my kids. Yeah. There's not. There's no way I'm gonna trust a man that's gonna come in and do everything off the back end. What do you want back? Like, what do you want for yourself? Because yeah. and what do you want with me that you're not gonna expect the same thing in return? Because that's not a partnership. Right. I want to be able to do the same things for them that they can do for me. Yeah. So I want it, but reality is I can't do that. Yeah. I don't, I'm living not paycheck to paycheck, but hustle to paycheck, pa- paycheck to hustle. Money is coming in and it's accounted for in every fucking penny. You know what I mean? So right. I don't have time for someone to come in and play with me and my money and my time. Yeah. Yeah. And I want, I want to explain that to people, but what I get on the internet is some shit like, oh, I want to kick it and do fly shit. I want to do fly. I want to kick it. You're not trying to build. I'm trying to build a legacy, bro. Yeah. Yeah. You're playing with my time, my energy. Yep. I don't really come out to AZ, but when I'm out there, can I hit you? No. You just told me that you're not looking for what I'm looking for. You want to yeah. play with me. Yeah. yeah you want to no. do fly shit because I look good. You're responding to videos. You're responding to booty shots. You're responding yeah. to me walking to the pool. But when I get online and start talking deep, you don't want to listen. But when I thirst trap in a swimsuit <laughs> and a bikini at the pool oh i'm oh you're listening i got your attention i don't yeah. want you i don't want nobody like you no nope. at least you can like recognize that though it took and a while oh i almost fell for it really? I was, sometimes they come, they're, easy to, though. well because these men like for example they come to me in my dm and they're like oh i own i got six businesses i got they come off as really secure everything but mentally everything but emotionally they're mature okay i was madly in love with the father of my kids from high school and if we were if we had support we'd probably still be together but because everybody in his family said it'll never work it's not gonna be it's not gonna last it didn't work yeah. it didn't it didn't last they were in his ear yeah. and i don't want to go through that with another person in their family because i love my family and yeah. i'm fighting so hard to heal the family that i've already been blessed with so i don't need to go out and try to interfere and intervene with somebody else's shit right yeah. i gotta save myself Definitely. Yeah. Um, and I would love to hear your guys' opinion on this. Russian children are now going through military training exercises, including martial art lessons, rifle oh, handling yeah. classes, 
Uh, I'm not sure the exact age, but when I was watching the video, oh. they look like 10, 12 years old, somewhere around that That's age. Crazy. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Again, some kids might need it and like it and be good at it. And some kids might need to sit with a color and crayon book in a box. And it's just different strokes for different folks. Yeah. I mean, I think those kids are going to be like, and it's a whole other country too. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't think it's really on that level. I think it's because of what's going on with Ukraine and Russia is why they're doing it. They're training them to be young yeah, soldiers. They're, they're mm -hmm. trying to That's teach right. them young but so see, they can fight. And here's the thing. They do I, the same thing in Asia. Yeah, they do. And why, uh, why, do we, why do we don't do it? And uh, Ukraine, I think they do the same thing too. I remember where else, but I think it would be a good thing because then it also teaches them self defense. You know what I mean? Or if we're ever in yeah, those such situations. a young age, that's yeah. too young. I feel like well, self defense of. at a certain age. We've taken so much from these kids and dumbed them as much mm -hmm. as possible with you know the foods and the the electronics and everything else. We've made our kids stupid. It's, and, it's funny that you say that though, Patrick, because you got to think too. Like every kid's gonna have the same training now. So yeah. Can you imagine what those fights are going to be like? It's Ooh, not going to be like be somebody brutal. slap and then they roll around on the floor. And I mean, I'm just saying like everything's going to be calculated <laughs> fights. You're going to have these 12 year olds. Well, well, kind of. So <laughs> let me let me make a point and then I'll let you go. Um, the reason why I say we've taken we made we dumbed them you know, down and we've taken so much. I think about that like in let's say dare. Let's say the dare programs. Let's say the fire. Remember when the uh, when we were in school, they used to have the mm -hmm, firefighters. They used to come. They used to teach us basic knowledge mm -hmm. on if our house is gonna burn down. I remember going through, you know, school, and I'm like, fuck. One day my house is gonna burn down. I'm gonna have to stop, <laughs> drop, and roll. Like yeah. I know that's gonna be the number yeah. one key. Yeah. My house never burned down. I was ready for but it. But you're ready. But think about it, if we had those martial, if we had some of the basic training, you know what I mean? You're right. Two, yeah. Well, like the back on the part where Elijah was saying, like. Some of these kids might be getting these training, but just like kids in every other day, they might learn shit. And if it doesn't resonate with them, it doesn't hit their core. They don't care. Right. So you could teach them that suplex hold. If they don't care to do it, they're not going to lock. Yeah. Which is when you go around your neck and you lock it. If they don't, if they don't want to get down like that, they're not. They might also. I'm going to have you teach that lock on Elijah. I'm gonna I see. sure will. And, <laughs> it's a, and it's a fun process too. So when you learn it, you might just do it on accident all the time. But, oh, sure. <laughs> but also the second thing is, is that, um, I love that you said our kids, because I get what you mean when you're saying like we've done our kids down. But check this shit out. Kids are so smart these days that they are knowing that they're not going to be playing with their mental health. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be playing with their peace of mind. And you're not going to be playing with these kids time. They'll yeah. let you know. Yeah. And they'll let you know. And I'm not just speaking about my kids, but these kids will let you know. I I don't like what you're doing yeah. with my school system. They rate it, you know. Their school programs, um, they pretty much organize strikes like with their own, their own schools to where schools have to change the curriculum. Yeah. Um, I don't know if people know this, but I feel like it's a different movement for these kids. I don't know about you. I like that we had dare. I like yeah. that we had those things, but I would have rather have had shop and learned how to build my fucking house. So, so I don't need a bank loan to right. go do it. You know? Uh, yeah. Those are just some examples because yeah. we even had like um, sex education and stuff right. like that. We've had so many different stuff that we had the opportunity for Who, I mean, that. Oh, I feel like they don't do that. The sex anymore. education part is cool because all of us, are, we come from a freaky generation. What yeah. kid these days do you see that want to have a baby? None yeah. of them. None yeah. of these kids barely want to have sex. Unless you like in my house. Right. I'm just saying. I'm just saying but <laughs> my like, boys are like, wait a minute. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, so my son likes, you know, he wants to date, but most most kids are claiming asexuality or I'm not a sexual person right. because I haven't had it. Like a lot of these kids are kind of like, doing stuff that I feel like their parents maybe wish they could have done, which yeah. is why there's a, de a detachment within our community. And that's why we're comparing other countries because the, we, we're, oh, we're scared. These kids are going to be trained like warriors. But these fucking kids don't want to do that shit. Yeah. They want to come over here and kick it with our kids. And our yeah. kids want to go over there and kick it with their right. kids. At the end of the day, if we just took all the kids and let them tell us what's up, we learn a whole lot. Yeah. They're disappointed and they don't want to be nothing like us. Yeah. They don't want to have shit that we got. They would rather live off the land. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. I think that's beautiful that a lot of kids are becoming from all walks of life um, are speaking up like the Iran. I know we keep talking about Russia and Ukraine and stuff, but there's a lot of issues going on like over in Iran and Jordan. Like they're, they're they're not respecting young women. They're not allowing them to speak. We're doing dances on TikTok, but people don't know those dances are to raise awareness over there. And I'm that's what I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about those people that – it sounds like all these other people have opportunities and all these other kids have good opportunities, whether yeah. it's fighting or not. They can make something good out of that. What can we make good out of women being detained and killed because they have a voice for themselves? Right. And also the history of Iran has been devoured over the last few, like 20 years. But it used to be ran by women. Yeah. 
And now they don't even let kids have freedom. They don't let the women have freedom. And it's just chaos. So I'd be more concerned about that. If Russia wants to teach their kids, China wants to teach their kids how to fight, that's cool. Do those kids want to fight? No. Yeah, they don't. Where are they going to just... come when they grow up here? Yeah. And what do they do? Get away from all of those t uh, trainings and tactics that they learned and come here and be them. Yeah. So I think that I hope I pray that they do well. But I don't like that they're training them to fight in a war. Yeah, that's yeah. really not. Yeah. What about this one? A mom gets her child diagnosed as autism spectrum. She does this to reap the benefits for parking, advanced boarding on planes and special attention, um, et cetera. Uh, my question is that if you knew this person, what are you saying? Are you saying anything at all? Right? Like, <laughs> what the fuck are you? What are you doing? She's mailing us. What are you doing? <laughs> like, um, but I, this is not. So this is not nothing new because you hear this from years and years and years because I think about the, and I'm probably going to say this wrong, but the Monchal syndrome, mm -hmm. Monchal, I don't know how I say it, but you guys know what I mean, right? Yeah. Um. So I, I hear about this all the time, but I don't know. When I say something probably, I'm like, you know, like it's, you're taking the advantage of someone else that, you know, can take advantage. But now these days, nobody even like says anything because we all know somebody that's always taking advantage of something. Right. Like nobody just like it is what it is you yeah. know yeah. nobody really says why why are you doing that yeah you know would you say something if that was say you had a friend that was doing that i yeah, if she was my friend i'd be like why would you do something like that like yeah. i mean i get what you're but you know what maybe that child is you know needs a lot of work and maybe they actually do need it like, let's say it, you know that they they are just lying because they you, know they can get yeah. away with it if they if, if the child really if they really need that for the child then okay yeah you know don't do it if just because i'm gonna just tell you arizona doesn't give it out like other states do so if that mm -hmm. kid went through the certifications and all the testings and all of those appointments right and a doctor saw anything on the spectrum whether it was high functioning adhd autism or any of those things and this kid just looked like a normal good kid and you, even though the mom is still saying i'm just doing this because i need the benefits and i need the help well yeah you might need a chick but your son or daughter is obviously in need of these things as right. well because it was saw fit do you know how hard arizona makes it for families to get those type of services yeah extremely hard so either both of them deserve an Oscar, Emmett, and in all those awards That's that you so can true. get. Yeah. Or, unfortunately, this is a pride thing that she's doing because, yes, she might be a little embarrassed or a little upset about the situation. And this is her way of being, like, culturally accepted like i'm just gonna get it for support i'm just gonna cause I, I love that help. you say that though yeah that's what piece of pride thing yeah it's, it's never i mean because have you ever met somebody who really needed that help they're not going to be ashamed i need yeah. the help help me yeah but when you're insecure about it and you're trying to fit in and keep up with the jones and the jets it's going to be like that and it's, even it's hard even how you said um i love how you say it. sometimes they can look normal you know yeah and it's like no it's not always a situation. Yeah. And the normal ones are the ones that don't get diagnosed is because they're they look so normal. So right. I'm trying to explain. It goes, Yeah, you look okay on the outside. Yeah. And then you know, oh man, all my life I've been living, it's been hard. I didn't know I had all these issues, you know? It's like a coworker of mine, she's, you know, experiencing that. She didn't know. And she's very it's it's her pride. Yeah. She's autistic. And she never understood why shit was so hard for her. She's a man who cannot, this is a thing. This, if she touches something, she'll do this until she can wash her hands. Yeah. And that is something that irritates her because also, um, like, if all of this was right here and she saw it, you would think, oh, she's just so cool. She's going to go pick it up. She's going to organize it, make things look nice. No, no, no. That's her autism. She can't function in this room. Oh, wow. Because it's out of order for her. Yeah. yeah. So when people do stuff like, I don't know if you've seen these memes going around. Oh, you thought you had a hood, dude, but you just had autism and special needs. It's That's very common. It's the truth. Yeah. Because how hard it is to go through the process to get the support you need. I don't believe anybody that says they're getting over on the system. No, you're not. Yeah. You know how hard it is? They yeah. check in Arizona. They check, check your food stamps. They're getting months. over on you. You just don't know it yet. You just don't know it yet. Yeah. yeah. yeah they check your stuff like they don't give out benefits like that. They're putting right. on top of it. No, yeah. yeah. They don't let you keep anything for it. You get a six-month check-in, whether it's medical, food. Uh, I, have no, I don't know about the cash part, but they barely give cash to mothers that need it. So I feel like it's a pride thing if someone's like, yeah, I'm just going to get this uh, little pass and I'm going to park here in the handicap and I'm going to get all these little benefits. Okay, but you're also keeping up with the requirements to stay in those. Absolutely you are. You're following up with the phone calls. You're sending the packets in. You're checking up with your doctor. There's so much stuff that there goes is. through with it. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh, yeah, yeah, whatever you say, sis. And the last one's crazy. Not really crazy, but yeah. Was cleaning my son's room and came across his porn collection. 
I was so horrified with the sights and searches that I'm afraid to ask him about it. My son is 12, and as a mother, I feel this would be the responsibility of the father, but he walked out when he was little. How are you approaching this situation? Well, just real quick, it's why we, let's not give away our power. Let's we claim our power and take it back. This is okay. not no parent has a defined role. Yeah. If the dad feels more comfortable talking about the sex with the son and he's not there, then I can see how that could matter. But let's not take our power away. Yeah. Because it was never specified when we decide to have kids who was going to talk about what. So my son, again, like I said, he's very advanced for his age. Weird porn shit. Yeah. And like I'm just it's my son. So anime. A mixture with some stuff that I'm confused about myself. Okay, that's not his sexuality. That's not his preference. He's just curious. Yeah, he's confused. Something he saw something and heard something, and now he's gonna try to go sneak behind my back and look it up because he doesn't feel comfortable to come to me, even though yeah. I've curated the most safest space for him. Doesn't matter. It's not where he feels that he can come to me. So he's gonna go online. He's gonna look some stuff up. It has nothing truly to do with their sexuality. It's just stuff they haven't seen. They have questions. They're curious. Right. And how I don't care how cool my mom is or my dad was. I don't think I would ever sit down and be like, how do I? How do yeah. I? It's a hard yeah. conversation. How do I do it? Yeah. I want to do it yeah. good. How can I get to that? Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't like you like that for you to be even telling me because I don't want to do what you do. <laughs> I want to do what I do. Yeah. It's definitely a tough one. They're going to watch. They're going to watch porn or they're going to find a magazine gonna- or. I don't know if they'll look at the magazines anymore. I think it's so outdated, but I think, yeah, the, they're going to find a couple of sites. Too much hard evidence. Anymore? I don't yeah. know. Too <laughs> much hard <laughs> evidence. Yeah. Centerfold. Yeah. I used to have a little uh, Maya on my wall. <laughs> Nobody's going to know. <laughs> oh. Right. <laughs> and you know what that means. It's now time for the no, the O, and the lab. It's where this and every show we give out a random hack, fun fact, or message and joke. Today's hack. Uh, this one's for potty training. Uh, which I'm currently in with my youngest. Um, put the toilet seat, chair, whatever it is that you get, put it in the room that they're in. It makes it convenient for them. Um, so if you're in the room, put it in the room. If you're in the kitchen, put it in the kitchen. I know sometimes it might seem disgusting, but your little one's trying to figure out how to use the restroom. And then sometimes when they have to go, it's quick just for them to go there. Uh, next, put food coloring in the toilet. So that way when they use the restroom, it changes colors. It'll excite them. So like if you put blue in there, it'll change green, you know? Mm-hmm. Next, um, buy their favorite ca- character underwear and hype them up from getting out of the diaper. You know what I mean? yeah. Oh, you get to wear these. You know what I mean? I, that used to be like my favorite part, buying them little uh, little chonies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and the last trick, if they like stickers or a special fruit or something cool as a treat. Uh, so every time they do use a the restroom, they get rewarded. And it's because it's something that they want to do, you know? Right. Always have a reward. It's always yeah. in a reward. Um, and the laugh. Not the laugh. And the joke. <laughs> You're supposed to laugh. I was telling you. <laughs> went a little ahead of myself. <laughs> Did you know that Australians don't have sex? <laughs> Crazy, right? That's great. Well, yeah. yeah I you... sure. They mate. <laughs> they <laughs> mate. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got me. You got me. I'm over here waiting for the joke. <laughs> yeah. And as we wrap up the show, I want to give a huge shout out to today's guest, Luna. Woo-hoo. Thanks, guys. Luna. I thought I was going to get the child's play laugh. <laughs> no, I, I was kind of overseeing. I was looking at it a little bit. And my co-host, Bernice. Hi. Hi, guys. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> and as always, Mr. Habari Live himself, Mr. Dip. Please like and follow Habari Live Podcast, Habari Entertainment. Please also check out One Love on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Stay safe out there. Stay hydrated. Make it a great day. We're out. Peace. Peace. Yeah. And love to the Middle East.